All right, welcome back, friends. So think of today's video as a part one review slash first impressions. Listen, I'm having a blast with Tears of the Kingdom and I really wanna take my time with it, but I also don't wanna leave you guys hanging for like three weeks as I torture the Koroks or make unholy structures. So here I am to give you my experience thus far. Minor spoilers will be uh, shown when it comes to some of the bosses, enemies, side quests, and areas, but I will not touch upon the main story whatsoever. I will save that for when I finish the game. Make sense? All right. I hope you guys are enjoying the game as well, by the way. I I've already seen a Korok strapped to a plane and hit a tower. That's a classic 9-11 joke by the internet. And I do support this bastion of Koroks, as I am an avid member of the Killing Koroks clan. <laughs> I also saw someone build this on TikTok, and I question whether I was supposed to see that or not, uh, but I will definitely try that out later on my own time. But to be serious for a moment, the creativity for Tears of the Kingdom is a 12 out of 10. This game is pretty much, you can do that, the video game. And when your audience has minor limitations for exploration and combat in a world like this, you know it's going to be a masterpiece. We're not halfway through the year yet, but so far, I don't really see any other contenders for Game of the Year. Like, not even close. And if you're watching this video thinking that Hogwarts Legacy is better, <laughs> shut up. Now, I believe Silk Song is coming out this year, I think in June? Uh, but could be a potential rival, but we shall see. Now, the ability responsible for all these crazy contraptions you've been seeing is the Ultra Hand. Definitely the best one by far in Link's arsenal. I mean, check this out. I built a cart that doesn't work and a vehicle with lasers on it. Link's other abilities this time around are pretty insane too. Fuse allows for any two weapons or items in your inventory to, well, fuse into one weapon. I made a sword that kills me instantly, but it's actually a large grenade if you're clever enough. Most enemies now drop their horns or claws that can be fused onto your spears and swords to make them much stronger and more durable. And hey, dude, I love this mechanic because I honestly thought the weapons from Breath of the Wild were kind of boring. I, I don't know. And b being able to fuse pretty much anything together is freaking great. I haven't really messed around with the shields yet, but I did fuse an apple to this shield, and that way I can defend from attacks and still keep the doctor away. Ascend is one of the more niche abilities, but when I do need it, it is a lifesaver. Uh, pretty much you can warp through ceilings, so whenever I was in a cave, instead of trekking all the way back, I would ascend up and continue exploring from a higher vantage point. I have to say, these are some of the best mechanics I have ever seen in a video game. Because the creative ceiling is so high, you can solve puzzles or fight enemies 100 times and have it be different every single time. The problem with a majority of open world games is that it becomes repetitive because it's pretty much the same thing over and over again. The gameplay doesn't really allow you to be flexible. Uh, but not with Tears of the Kingdom. Sure, you may find similar enemy bases from time to time, similar cave systems, but again, you can approach it differently from most other people's playthroughs. I built this bridge by using floating debris to access the main port, which I'm pretty sure was not intended, uh, but I did it anyway because ingenuity! You don't need me to tell you that these abilities are a straight up blast to experiment with. What I do want to mention is how much this game approved upon the first. Like, listen, Breath of the Waifu was already a masterpiece. Don't get it twisted, okay? It was a phenomenal journey. I did have my problems with the game, though, such as the enemy variety, the weapons, you know, things like that. Not only did Tears of the Kingdom answer most of those issues, but built upon the creativity to an unprecedented level. However, the one I do want to focus on is enemy variety, as it was one of my main complaints. I mean, I got boring fighting the same kiddie pool of monsters over and over again. In Tears of the Kingdom, I have found so many enemies that even the trees want beef. What's crazy to me is that I'm only about a quarter of the way done with the main story. I still have the Gerudo Desert, Death Mountain, not to mention some mini bosses that I haven't fought yet. And that's another thing, a boss variety has increased too, which I'm very happy with as well. I personally haven't seen that many new ones, but I, I did get spoiled with a few bosses that show up later, so it's good to know that I haven't seen everything just yet. But I'm happy with the new enemies. I, I think they did a fantastic job thus far. Like, there's a lot of them, and they're very different from each other. There was another thing that I, I was worried about, but then I realized it really doesn't apply to me. I, I've seen many folks complaining that Tears of the Kingdom takes place in the same exact location as Breath of the Wild, so it's a copy and paste, it's gonna be repetitive, etc, etc. Uh, for me, I don't really care, as long as there's enough changes to justify staying in a similar location. Besides, the last time I played Breath of the Wild was a couple years ago. Do you really think I'm going to remember every little detail about the region? No. Not to mention that the landscape is considerably different. 
Uh, one example, there are cave systems now, which kind of reminds me of Elden Ring, and, and that's a good thing. There's a similar fashion going on here. I think it's great to explore these caves to find certain materials and essentially take a break from attempting to climb mountains or fight enemies that are way above my level. Let me not forget to mention the Sky Islands and the depths below, which, by the way, I love the depths. I think it's a fantastic area, and exploring it is one of my favorite things to do currently. There's a lot of lore to uncover down there too, and that makes things all the more interesting. The Koga clan makes a return in Tears of the Kingdom, and their main base, as far as I'm aware, uh, resides within the depths, and they have access to the same technology we do. And I do appreciate that the Koga clan down here takes advantage of the technology to, you know, make planes or tanks. It's not just that you can do it, but some of the enemies can do it as well, and it really has this nice dynamic. However, you know, the depths are great, but on the opposite side of the spectrum, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, uh, I find the Sky Islands to be a bit underwhelming. Maybe I'm not finding the right spots or something, but most of what I found are miniature islands with a chest or two, and, and like, that's about it. But I am sure there's way more to do, so I'll keep you posted, but that's my experience thus far. And again, I'll go more into detail about these regions in a future video, uh, but just know that so far, the Egyptian approves. The only complaints that I can really say about my journey are the weather conditions. You know, there's a reason why Monster Hunter took out cold and hot drinks for the environment, because farming for specific shrooms in Tears of the Kingdom to keep cool or warm is annoying. Not to mention the lightning. Like, dude, the lightning is... I don't know why they kept that in. It's so stupid. Maybe to have a sense of realism, but, like, dude, you, you're always gonna have some sort of metal object on you, so I basically have to pause my adventure whenever this happens. Otherwise, I'm, I'm getting blasted. And it's not my fault. Metal equipment is usually good equipment, so I'm gonna keep it. If you guys know of any way to counteract this, like, let your boy know, because I am struggling over here. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover thus far. Again, I made this video so that you guys have something to snack on before the full meal comes out, uh, which is my full-on review. And not to mention I'll be doing some challenge runs for this uh, game because there's a lot of potential here. And, I mean, let me know what you guys are thinking thus far about the game. Do you like it? Are you thinking it's like a copy and paste of Breath of the Wild? I would love to hear your opinion. And, I, and it just occurred to me that I forgot to do my intro. So, my name is Josh, also known as Gorjuanada, and thank you guys for watching. Again, stay tuned for a full video on TikTok. I almost, why did I say TikTok? <laughs> a full video on Tears of the Kingdom, as well as some challenge runs. And if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone, and of course, stay safe.